Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. I hope you had a nice break. Welcome back to the 2015 Vietnam Economic Outlook. The next speaker, we pleased to present you, Mr. Vaughn Ryan. Uh, a little bit about Mr. Ryan. He is currently the managing director of News in Vietnam, the man to know. Um, this man knows everything about the liquor industry. <laughs> Come on, Ryan. Um, he has relentless focus on innovation, long-term sustainable growth, and developing great leaders in the future. He's managing large team to conduct consumer research across various industry groups, including FMCG, finance, automotive, and telecos. I wanted to use a welcome, Mr. Vaughn Ryan. He will share some likes in consumer market trends in 2015, and how do you get money out of consumer pockets? Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for having me. Um, the first thing I'm going to ask you to do after a break, because I thought I got a good time slot today, but clearly not, I got after the break process. I'm gonna ask you to all stand up. So please stand up for me. <coughs> I want you to turn to the person next to you and shake hands and say congratulations. <laughs> and I'm going to assume that you're going to survive the next 21 days because if you did, you survived one of the toughest years from a domestic demand perspective in Vietnam's history. Well, certainly in the last 30 years. This has been a hard, hard year. You can now sit down. <laughs> Fortunately, I get the opportunity to present to many clients. And when I talk to them about consumers and I talk to them about the current economic environment and the current market, what's very clear is that 2014 has been a really difficult year for us. It's something that we didn't predict. It's something that we didn't forecast. So when I was asked to forecast 2015, you can understand I do it with some trepidation today. I'm not that keen to do that. So I will talk a lot about the past. And if you've ever studied history, you'll know that you have to understand the past to understand the future. So let's have a quick look at Vietnam at a glance. I'm not an economist. I look at market trends and I look at what's actually happening in the market. I'm very passionate and bullish about Vietnam. But moving into 2015, we are starting off a low base for the first time in a long time in a consumer sense. Consumers are more savvy than ever before about what they purchase. How many of you have a smartphone? Put your hand up if you have a smartphone. Yeah? We all have phones, all right? You're a CEO, you should have more than a smartphone. Two. Two? We, you must be Vietnamese, the only Vietnamese person in the room, because the average Vietnamese man has two phones, right? The average woman has 1.8. I'm not sure why the 0.2 difference, but we, on average, we buy a new mobile phone every eight months. Eight months. Why so quick? Yeah, that's if you're buying iPhones, that's a lot of money you're spending on a phone. That may be why the consumer situation is the way it is today. If you actually have a look at this market right now, we're running a two-stream economy, and I'm not here to talk about the World Bank. I see a bit later on, and some of the, the other people that are more experts in the financial situation than I am. But what I can tell you is that domestic demand is very low right now. And throughout 2014, we experienced decline in FMCG sales for the first time in Nielsen's recorded history in Vietnam, which is 21 years. So for 21 years, we've been experiencing nice double-digit growth until now. You can see that inflation is moderately low at 4.5%. Yes, exports are doing very well, but we're seeing such sluggish growth when it comes to our GDP. If we actually compare this to some of the other markets, and this is a chart that I present to my regional boss, so if you want to steal it, you're more than welcome to do so. When you're talking about forecasts and bonuses for next year, make sure you present this chart. Vietnam, compared to a number of other of our Southeast Asian and Asian neighbours, our GDP expectations are quite moderate to low versus a lot of the neighbours around us. Is that good or is it bad? Well, you know, people can say either way, but what I would say to you right now, that the GDP is heavily focused on exports right now, not on the domestic situation. And if you look at retailers across the board, they've suffered heavily over the last 12 months. The one guarantee I can guarantee to you is change. Yeah, Change will happen, and change is happening faster here than in many other markets in the world. The volatility we experience here is unlike pretty much any economy that you can see around this region. We talk about Vietnam suffering in a retail sense, but every market in Asia has slowed down over the last 12 months. 
Other markets will use other reasons. Thailand will talk about military coups. The Indonesians will talk about elections. So too will the Chinese and the Indians. They'll talk about elections. The Filipinos will talk about typhoons. All around the region, there's an excuse why the market is slow. The reality is, consumers are not buying as much as they used to of FMCG goods. That's what is actually happening across Asia. So, with this change, you can see that volatility has been really rapid. What we're looking at in this chart, the red line, is FMCG growth throughout Vietnam. You can see that for most of 2012, we were the fastest growing retail environment in the world. Number one, that was when I moved here, so hopefully that's not what actually happened. I didn't bring the decline. But certainly what's happened since has been a really fast, slowing, growing market. To the point now where we're one of the slowest growing markets in Asia. This is really hard to explain, guys. It's volume and value consumption has reduced. There are pockets of excellence within FMCG, but for the most part, the market is in really bad position. I'll give you an example. I don't know how many smokers are in the room, and I'm not sure if you're aligned with this, but cigarette sales are down 10% in Vietnam today. Cigarettes, right? You know, 80% of males 15 and above smoke in this country, and they're smoking 10% less than they did 12 months ago. You know, categories that have long been sustained with big growth, things like laundry powder, shampoo, some of the staples of life have reduced in volumes. Big manufacturers, I can't see some of them here today, thank God. No. Some of them like Unilever, Procter & Gamble, are experiencing decline for the first time in their history in Vietnam. This is a big deal, guys. These are big employers. How this impacts the future is going to be very interesting. Come Tet, I'm not sure all of these companies are going to pay a bonus. That's further going to actually impact consumers' ability to buy stuff. And if that happens, we could expect another tough year in front of us. This market is not as simple as total nationwide. I'm sure you all know this. I get asked to talk about Vietnam and I say, this is many countries within a country. This is many situations within a, a market. You know, we know the differences between Ho Chi, Ho Chi Minh City and Hanoi. But in Ho Chi Minh City, the market is completely different to what we're seeing in Hanoi right now. Hanoi is suffering a lot worse than in Ho Chi Minh City. Modern trade is growing a lot faster in Ho Chi Minh City. Traditional trade is still very strong in Hanoi. You know, this is, the consumers are very different as well. In Ho Chi Minh City, there's no loyalty. So I'm not sure how many of you are Saigonese in the room. You're probably the sort of friend I want to shake hands with and meet for five minutes, but I don't want to be a long-term friend of yours. In Hanoi, you won't talk to me for two years, but once I become friends with you, I have you for friend for life. They're very loyal, the Hanoians, but take a long time to win. If you run a marketing campaign in Hanoi, you have to plan for two years. If you run a marketing campaign in Ho Chi Minh City, you have to plan for two days. It has to be quick, yeah? You have to recognise these situations. I'm passionate about rural. I read and I look at most of your reports and you all talk about 90 million people. Why do you compete in Ho Chi Minh City and Hanoi only? 20 million people. 68% of this population live in rural Vietnam. Vietnam is number one for exports of rice of seafood, of coffee, of black pepper, number three in cocoa beans. This place is a food basin, it's a bread basket of Asia. And rural is where it's going to grow. Why are we not looking at those consumers? Those consumers are getting wealthier every day. Their life gets better every day. If you can attract those consumers to your products and services, you will win, and you will win long term. So if you're not thinking rural, you need to think rural, and I'll touch upon this shortly in a few more charts. You know the differences between north and south, but central is also different. And Da Nang is a growing city. Da Nang is a city worth investment. It's a seeing huge growth. We're seeing huge growth in terms of consumers' ability to buy. And this is one of the markets we do expect to grow faster than the rest of the nation in the next 12 months. We talk a lot about the affluence of markets, and I notice there's a few bankers here. The reality is, yes, most of the banks are talking to the affluence, but Vietnam has one of the fastest growing emerging middle classes in the world. You know, if you actually look at this emerging middle class, average incomes are growing faster than most other economies with the exception of Indonesia. Yeah, we're growing faster than India, we're growing faster than China in terms of our emerging middle class. For that reason, you have to make sure that you're talking to these consumers in these new formats, these new areas. 
This is not just about the affluent consumer. The affluent consumer is about 2% of the economy. If you want the rest, you actually have to speak to the masses. You have to market to the masses. These people rely upon word of mouth. Word of mouth is a critical component. And the biggest concern from consumers in Vietnam is a lack of trust. They don't trust any of us. If you think they do, they don't, right? They talk to friends all the time. And the biggest driver of trust, and I'm not saying this because you're here, Duke, is, big, is retailers. Retailers are the biggest driver of trust in this economy. If you can win the retailer over, you win the retailer's heart, you'll win the consumer over. It's a mixture of old versus new values. Back in 2008, we did a study which indicated that less than 7% of consumers were willing to buy made in Vietnam products. Today, it's over 35%. Made in Vietnam is a real valuable asset now. If you're not making in Vietnam, even as a multinational company, you have to consider it. You guys, I see some of you nodding your head. I bought some fruit today and I had it at work and one of the ladies at work came up to me, she's in the back of the room and she said, don't eat that, that's Chinese. All right? You might think that that's not a big deal, but to Vietnamese consumers it is. Yeah, it's a massive deal. Vietnamese consumers care where the product is made. Yeah, if it's made in the wrong country, your product will suffer. If your services come from the wrong country, your product will suffer. You have to make sure that made in Vietnam is becoming part of your agenda, or at least you're looking towards investing here. The multinational versus local is a real interesting one. A number of the multinationals have really thrived for many years, but when I look at the opportunities for my business over the next five to 10 years, it's local giants. You know, it's some of these big local companies. It's Massan, it's Vinamilk. I don't know if you heard the other day, but Mondelez, the craft company, just bought Kindo, the biggest biscuit and pie company in Vietnam. The investment that's happening here from some of the local giants is fantastic. And they understand the consumers. Unilever and Profit and Gamble owned 100% of laundry powder over the last 25 years in Vietnam. A small company called Arba, a local company that started in the Mekong, now has a 20% share of laundry powder. May not be a big deal to any of you today, but if you don't see local guys as a threat, they're coming, and they're coming fast. And they understand the consumers, and consumers no longer see a problem with buying them. The shopper versus the retailer is a really interesting dynamic. I spoke before about the importance of the retailer. The retailer is everything in this market. If you ever go across the Cat Life Ferry and you walk down the road there to the traditional trade people, and you walk into the store, the person knows you. You've been there once and they nod and they recognise you and talk to you like a friend. They, there's a, a, a spirit that grows between a retailer and a consumer in Vietnam, unlike any other market. These people probably knew their mum, their grandfather. They've actually got a relationship. Quite often they are related. And for that reason, traditional trade, retailers are very, very important. The shopper is important, but it's more important to win the retailer over. And don't judge Vietnam by its cover. Don't ever judge this book by its cover. I'm gonna show you some statistics shortly on online and communication and how you communicate to these consumers. Vietnam is one of the fastest growing adopters of technology in the world, and it's cheap, right? I don't know about what you pay for Wi-Fi in other markets, but Wi-Fi here is relatively free compared to other markets. After two years in Thailand where I had to pay about $90 a month for my Wi-Fi, I come here and it's like loose change. It is very, very cheap. So consumers, yes, the market's tough, but they're starting to feel a bit brighter about the future. Vietnamese are typically pretty optimistic people when it comes to their consumer confidence. You can see that in quarter three of 2014, the consumer confidence jump was the biggest in six years since Nielsen's been measuring this. And our primary concerns a health, not just my health, but the health of my family and my children, particularly my children. But if you actually start to read some of the government reports, the government's very concerned about obesity amongst children, and so it should be. You know, the old measure, measurement of good motherhood was having a kid that was big or large. I wish my mum felt the same way about me. But the reality is right now, obesity is starting to become a bit of a crisis. Kids are eating poorly at schools, and the government's recognising this more and more. The economy is our number two concern and it's always in the top three. But interestingly, job security is growing all the time. We talk about job security not as in unemployment, but underemployment. Many consumers want more work. Yeah, particularly given over 60% of the population live in rural, 
30% of them live off the land or they live off uh, farming. They don't have a regular job. They live off crop to crop and they want more work. When we ask, compared to last year, where are you trying to save your money? It's on gas and electricity still. They want to save to, on clothes and they want to cut down on out-of-home entertainment to the point where this year, out-of-home consumption reduced by 5%. That's why cigarette sales dropped. Beer sales suffered in the first half of the year. Carbonated soft drinks suffered as well. It's certainly one of the challenges within the marketplace. It's a changing population though, guys, and it's changing fast. If you look at some of the projections in terms of population growth over the next, until 2025, Vietnam's expected to be a 100 million people population. It's certainly big growth, growing by another 10 million people, or around about 10 million people. And as I mentioned earlier, we have one of the fastest emerging middle classes in the world, growing at 145%. What does this mean? Well, according to the OECD, this means by 2030, we'll have 95 million middle class people. And at the same time, the actual overall consumption will grow to $940 billion. Compare that to 2012 at $46 billion. This shows there's huge growth opportunity still in the market. So on one hand, 2014, really tough year. The future is still bright and the future's worth investment. The population has a real disparity here. In a lot of Asian cultures right now, they're really suffering, particularly in Singapore and Japan and to a certain extent Korea, in an aging society. We're not quite at that point today. We're still young and dynamic, and I include myself in on that. But we have these little emperors. The little emperors are the people that are far more educated than their families were in the past. They're far more savvy about what they want to buy and what they want to do. They want foreign education. They want better lives than their parents did. And their parents want better for them. And they're willing to invest. And they're living alone more and more. These people are looking for apartments. Mark's right that people are out there looking for units and they want smaller apartments. They don't want to live at home anymore. Check out your staff over the next few weeks. Ask them what they're going to do for tech this year. Many of them will say that they're going to go home for one or two days. Three years ago when you asked your staff what they were going to do for tech, they were going home for the whole period. These people no longer rely upon their families as much as they did in the past. Family values are changing in Vietnam and they're changing fast. We have to adapt. We have to adapt to what consumers want and need. And these guys are online all the time. I've been up here for about 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and I think I've seen about 30% of the room look at their mobile phone, right? You, are, you guys are online all the time, yeah? I don't know if you know, 80% of Vietnamese 18 and over sleep within 50 centimetres of their mobile phone, right? 50 centimetres, right? Do you know that of that 80%, 99% of those people touch their mobile phone before their feet hit the ground? Think about that. They're in bed, first thing they do, check their phone, probably to switch off the alarm, check their email from the night before, and roll over and kiss their partner. Yeah? Since I found out that statistic, I kiss my wife first, then I grab my phone and check my email. It's very, very important to think about this. When you think about the actual overall ad spend and where people are going to spend and how they're going to communicate in the future, according to PwC a report, we know that digital media is going to grow and it's going to grow fast. Yeah, it's one of the big angles of it all. But did you know that Vietnamese consumers don't engage with brands, particularly in social media? In Thailand, 46% of consumers engage in brands online every day. In Vietnam, it's 8% of consumers. Right? We just don't trust brands online yet. So I'm sure you've heard that Lazada are about to open up in Vietnam, legally this time. You know, so when Lazada open, their biggest challenge is going to be building trust. If they can build the trust, they can be successful. If we go a little bit further in terms of some of the statistics, well, smartphone ownership in urban Vietnam has grown from 30% in 2012 to 55% in 2014. I'm not talking about functional phones or feature phones, I'm talking smartphones. These people are online all the time and they're accessible online all the time. Your challenge is to get them to listen to you. Some of the basic statistics we did in a recent study in terms of online media consumption, you can see that we spend about 15 and a half hours per week online. That's a lot, guys. Yeah. 
Five years ago, CBS said television is nearing its death. We're really worried about TV consumption. Today in the US, the average consumer watches 55 minutes more TV than they did five years ago. But they watch half of it online. And they watch about 25% of that on their mobile phone. You think about where you consume news now, where you consume information. Yeah, you don't have to be home at six or seven o'clock to watch the television anymore. You can watch TV wherever you want, whenever you want, on demand, you know, all the time. You can be with your wife and pretend you're listening, but you can be watching television. Yeah, it's one of the great treats of life right now. You know, we've quadrupled in terms of our smartphone consumption. You know, we've doubled the amount of laptops that are in the market. On average, we have about three devices, three devices each. I'm sure you all have an iPad, an iPod, an iPhone, an iMac, everything I in your life. If you don't, you're probably a Samsung lover and you have a Samsung Galaxy this, Galaxy that, Galaxy everything else. Maybe in the next couple of years you might cha change and you might have an Oppo, an Oppo X, an Oppo Y, an Oppo Z. All these new brands are appearing all the time and there's something new out every day. You, know, you can see Android is growing. Android will overtake Apple in North America in the next 12 months. Android will become big here. If you're not sure what Android is, you should ask your kids. They know what it is, right? Don't judge this book by its cover. Vietnam is the largest downloader of videos in the world. In the world. Right? We download more videos than any other market in the world. Probably illegally, but we still download them. Right? It's one of the tough things for us. We measure television audience measurement. In Vietnam, we don't because we don't know how to. It's really, really difficult. But downloading is a huge business here. People are online all the time. I'm gonna keep reminding you guys of this. They're online. How do you build trust with your brand? It's easy to reach them, but how do you make them actually look at your brand? I had a bank recently come up to me and tell me that they had the fastest growing Facebook in Vietnam. I went, how did you do that? And he said, I don't know if you know, but we sponsor one of the biggest English football teams. I won't tell you the team, because then you'll work out the bank. I said, so how did you get them to actually jump onto your Facebook? And he said, if you join our Facebook, you get live scores and updates and interviews that you wouldn't get if you don't join our Facebook. So my obvious question to him was, are they joining you or are they joining that English Premier League team? And he said, no, they're joining me. I said, I don't think so. They're very patriotic of the football team and they're joining that team. I said, how many of them have you actually looked at that have gone from joining that that actually bank with you? And he said, uh, none at this point in time. I said, I think that's your answer, right? It's not just about reach, it's about resonating with consumers. So how do you influence this new consumer? What do you need to do? TV is still king, guys. I might have told you a lot about the future. TV is still number one. In rural Vietnam, the average consumer watches 25 hours television per week. 25 hours TV per week. Now, I challenge you to watch three hours television in a day. A few weekends ago, I sat down with my daughters and I said, I'm going to watch three hours TV. About 30 minutes into it, I got up, went back to my phone, walked outside, read something, got back to work. Can't do three hours TV in a day. That's really, really tough. These consumers in rural watch TV at different times than you and I. They watch TV. Women control the remote between 12 till 2. That's one of the cheapest time slots to buy in media. Right? Between 12 till 2. Yeah? The man controls the remote from 6 until 8 o'clock. And what men like is football. Clearly with Vietnam starting to win more games in the Suzuki Cup. What women love is Korean soaps. Right? They love Korean soaps. Now hopefully none of you run a magazine company here. Don't advertise in magazines. Right? Don't advertise there. No one reads them anymore. No one's got time. Right? We're online. I'd much rather check out my emails, my Facebook, my Twitter, my, my whatever thing I'm looking at right now online than actually read a magazine. And it's a real challenge for us. Vietnamese consumers are discerning. They don't just buy. They look around. They lack trust. <coughs> Vietnam is one of the highest markets in the world that waits for someone else to buy before they buy. I'll give you the analogy. As an Australian, when I go to the beach, I sit there with my friend and I say, you jump in first. One, to see if it's cold. Two, to make sure that there's no sharks and he doesn't get eaten. And if he doesn't get eaten and he says it's not too cold, I'm in there next, right? I jump in, right? I am the Vietnamese Australian, clearly, right? 
Because I'm the same. I'm discerning when it comes to jumping in water. There's so many retailers here. And if you're serious about Vietnam and you're serious about Nationwide, you have to be serious about your investment. Don't just look for simple distribution. You know, there's over one million retail outlets in Vietnam. One million retail outlets. 85% of total FMCG sales still happen from traditional trade. That will change in time. But right now, traditional trade is still the king. But how do you distribute a product to a million outlets? That's an enormous challenge for anyone. Hopefully some business ideas come out of this, because I know a number of manufacturers want to know that answer. If you can answer that question, you can get your product into those retailers, wow. And did you know that the average retailer, 90% of them give a recommendation to a person that's about to buy every day. And 30% of those consumers buy because of that recommendation. That's eight million purchases a day that actually occur because of a retailer recommendation. That's a lot, guys. So how do you drive your brand? What do you have to do? Well, you have to drive quality. Quality is a key one. Quality is something that consumers will actually look at more and more. Origin is a really important asset for your brand. If you're made in Vietnam, or if you're made in North America, Australia, Europe, it is an asset for you. But trust is the key. How do you build trust? Word of mouth. You have to embrace the touch points of these consumers. You have to captivate the power of the word of mouth and drive retailers to become your brand ambassadors. Majority rules in Vietnam, it really does. The majority really does count. And I talk about the affluence versus the masses. We're all here because we know that this market's gonna grow. We all know that this market will grow. It might have had a bit of a hiatus in 2014 and it might slowly recover in 2015, but at some point this market has huge potential and will take off again. That's why we're all here, that's why we're all listening. But you have to go for the majority, guys. The majority do rule where this is concerned. 68% of the population live in rural Vietnam, more than two times the size of urban. It's a young and increasingly dynamic market. It has over three quarters of a million stores. They watch TV every day and they're not going to go away. People talk about urbanisation the world over. Less than 600,000 people move from rural to urban every year. Being an Australian, 750,000 people moved from rural Australia to urban Australia last year with a population of 24 million. People are not urbanising here at the rate that they talk about in other markets. They want to, but they're not doing it, right? It's a real key factor. So where to? Where do we take all of this? I want to talk to you about three words. Three words that dictate the future of your business in terms of marketing. It's easy to create reach. I know I've only got a couple of minutes left, what I was told recently was a guy came into my office and said, do you want to buy the billboard on Nguyen Van Choi near the Move and Pick Hotel? He said, over a million vehicles pass this every day. I said, vehicles or bikes? And he said, bikes. I said, a million? He goes, yep, yep, yep. I said, how many people look up at the sign? And he said, I don't know. I said, well, how about we go down on the road and have a look? And for about 10 minutes, we watched motorbikes go past and not one of them looked at the sign, right? Yes, I reached a million people, but it didn't resonate with any. Right? Doesn't resonate with one. How do you make this resonate with your consumers? Think about how many television commercials you watch. Think about online how you're going to resonate with consumers. Think about, yes, I might get that English football team to help me out, but how many people are going to actually look at my brand? How are you going to do that, guys? Because you have to start considering this. It's easy to get all those people downloading, but how does it resonate? The average TVC online needs to be seven seconds. That's how long you can keep my eyeballs on my phone on a TVC. Anything longer, and I start to wander around or I close it. So seven seconds you have to communicate, build trust, and make me want to buy. And that's the final one, which is react. And that's got to be the key. So yes, measure reach, but measure how many people care for your brand and actually want to look at it. And ultimately, you have to measure yourself by what you buy. I like this quote because I think this really summarises Vietnam very well. Because someone is in the shade today because of a tree that was uh, dug up and uh, planted a long time ago and I feel that that time is now. We've got to plant some seeds. Thank you. I'm going to hang around. Ask plenty of